What do you think this is? <laughs> a male skull. Okay. Male skull? A male skull. How did, yeah, you're right. How did you know it was a male? Uh, it's ginormous. Exactly. <laughs> the, the, the skull of a grizzly bear would easily fit in his mouth. That, is that big. And I have a polar bear skull, which is about <laughs> about three quarters that size. Yeah, yeah it's a yeah, polar bear is huge. Um, and um, is this a real skull? No. Uh, you know. It's, 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 it's the wrong color, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, one of the main things, if we had a real skull out here, as you know, the skulls composed of several bones. Uh, just moving it around, those the sutures, the joints between the different bones, the thing would fall apart. So we have a plastic one. And one of the things I like to do is pretend I'm a scientist, and you see the skull. <laughs> what's what do you what can you learn about elephant seal foraging behavior by looking at their or feeding behavior by looking at their teeth? Well they have large prominent canines. Yeah, they have large canines, right? So they probably use those for hunting. For grasping, right? Yep. A nice little squid comes by. Uh -oh. <laughs> and so on. Yeah, yeah. But once he bites it, can you tell what he's gonna do with it? You'll notice that they're missing the teeth we have in the back of our mouth, right? So that tells you that they, they bite and swallow, right? They don't they don't chew it up. So um, that tells you that they're sort of a little little bit limited in, in the kind of the size things they can eat. They're not going to take a big chunk out of something and come back and then, and then chew it up. Um, and These animals have amazing adaptations to all the different uh, factors that they're exposed to. Uh, but the males will eat up to 2,000 pounds, 200 pounds of food a day when they're up on the feeding grounds, right? That's an awful lot of food. We just talked about the fact that they don't chew it up into in bits and pieces. So they swallow it. And in our the human body, which you probably know a little more about, the human body, we chew our food up, we, it goes in the stomach, and then it goes into our stomach our intestines and intestines okay and in the intestines we finish digestion and we and we do the absorption of the, of the stuff we want any idea how long the human intestine both large and small intestines are like 30 feet or something yeah. very close yes yeah it depends on they say it's uh, five or six times your height okay okay elephant seals so what would you think their their intestines right they're just eating Big hunks of food is, or hunks of food as best they can. Do you think they would be relatively longer or relatively shorter than humans? Remember, they can't chew it up. Yeah. I would think longer than yeah. Ben, yeah. Substantially longer. Yeah. Their intestines are 15 to 25 times their length. So they, it'll be longer than a football field, right? So that's one of their adaptations to this, this amazing lifestyle. So, um, We know that we know where they go to feed because thanks to the efforts at uh, at UC Santa Cruz, um, they and you can actually find this. There's a, there's several websites. One of them is T O T O P P tagging of Pacific predators. Mm -hmm. You can look that up, and, and, and they'll have uh, they show all kinds of things. They have sharks, they have birds, they have elephant seals. So this is a graph that was generated. They had to figure out how to put them to sleep so that they can glue, just use epoxy glue and glue these GPS devices on their heads. And they found out that there's actually a, a difference between where the males and the females go, okay? So here we are in California, and we, the males uh, go along the continental shelf, which is, you know, the part of the ocean closest to the continent is it's relatively shallow, in quotes. So it's still five or 600 feet deep down, but these elephant seals have amazing ability to dive very deeply. As a matter of fact, that's their primary way to get away from predators is just to stay down deeper than the predators would go. Um, along the continental shelf, they have access to lots and lots of different kinds of food. So that includes octopus, skates, rays, lobsters, whatever they, whatever they can find. Um, so they'll, they basically eat whatever, whatever they want, um, including my favorite 
odd fish, odd animal. Uh, <laughs> hagfish, you guys ever heard of hagfish? Nasty. Yeah, yeah. Yes, they, they're called uh, slime eels, or if you're trying to get somebody's attention, they call them snot eels. Um, <clears throat> turns out that um, hagfish, and you can look it up on YouTube, if you look up hagfish shark, you can actually watch a, a hagfish swimming around like an eel, and the small shark comes up and bites it, and in the next instant, the hagfish, or the, excuse me, the shark, is vomiting out a mouthful of slime. Why do you think? I'll tell you this. The slime is not toxic. It doesn't taste bad. It's not acidic. Why does, it, why does the shark want to get rid of... It's just like congest them? Like they can't have the uh, circulation of water to their gills, maybe? Exactly right. It's, it's just like putting a pillow over somebody's head, yep. right? So they, so they can't do that. Elephant seals don't have that problem, right? So they'll, they'll eat them. It turns out that there is a fishery for hagfish right here in Avila Beach. If you ever go out on Avila Pier, he was out there one day, this guy walks by, he's got dreadlocks. It looks like his head is covered in hagfish. This is like, <laughs> <laughs> it turns out he's a hagfish fisherman, and he was kind enough to show me their processing area. We just have these huge, this huge, two huge tanks where the hagfish they catch out in the ocean. They bring them in, they let them swim around in clean water, clean them up, and then they ship them alive over to Korea. Another YouTube thing, look up <laughs> Korean street food. You can actually see how they prepare them. They love them because they don't have any bones. The skull is cartilaginous, and they're easily easy. They take the skin off, and they can chop up the protein right there, and they'll mix it up. So. From here, they actually ship them alive to um, to Korea. They, they put them in styrofoam containers, uh, bubble some extra oxygen in them, and ship them away. And my favorite thing about that is, every once in a while, the truck that is carrying the hagfish gets run into by a car, or runs into a car. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good picture, I like that picture. <laughs> so you can see the little hagfish. <laughs> On the ground. A little bit of snot them, going on there. A little bit of snot. <laughs> and, and it took them 24 hours to get the slime off the road. <laughs> so I know this isn't about elephant seals, but it's, you know. No, that's awesome. Where, where was that? Where'd that happen? Uh, that was up in Oregon. Oregon. Okay, they have cool. Another, they have another fish wow. up there. <laughs> but if you're, ever, if you're ever out on Avila Pier and you see a guy. We, with were, just out, we were just out there. So that's yeah. the white, that's the white uh, building when we were walking to the fish mark. And then there's the fish market to the side. There's that white. Um, kind of fishing, that's the one that you're talking about, right? I think so, it's out on the pier, I yeah, know. Okay, pier. Yes, the white one, and so they, they were closed when we went there, but that's the one that um, I was telling you, last time I was there, they were yeah. doing the same thing, I saw them processing them. Yeah, and the guy was very, he took a, you know, plastic break, picked up five hagfish, and this curtain of clear white slime just dripped down, <laughs> and it, it's amazing, it's not really sticky, so we, we touched it, and he told us that they're, they're trying to develop uses for the slime. My, my favorite one is they want to use it as a dental adhesive to stick people's pictures wow. in their mouth. Wow. They're also trying to figure out if they can use it for uh, burn victims because you know you want to... You, the bandages that, that, that you put on is one of the problems with burn victims. And the final one I couldn't believe, he said they can take the slime and roll it into very tough fibers. They're trying to make bulletproof vests. <laughs> wow. So that's my, I would not have uh, guessed yeah. Hagfish are bulletproof. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Put enough right? of them together. Yeah. <laughs>